This is the TM Light Series here at the New York Auto Ring for round number 13 of the 2012 campaign. The Casargo Polo Award went to the 29 car driven by James Davison. Davison has one win this season coming at the West Midland Bull Ring in Michigan. Davison got a pretty good start over second place starter Dexter Hamlet in the 54 CRPR Explosives car, but Zach Gott in the 71 has closed up the gap. Davison uh, moves down to the middle to try to defend the position. Now he's swerving all over the backstretch. I have no idea what he's trying to accomplish there. That's probably why nobody made a charge at him. They were worried that he would wreck the whole field. But they are all running three wide behind the leader, so I don't think that any wrecks that might happen would be of Davison's doing. As Zach Gutt now gets a run on Davison coming into the trioval with a bit of help from Mike Andrews. And Andrews now leaves the uh, tries to leave the 71 behind and make a run for the lead himself. Davison is doomed to end up in the back of the field in these opening laps. Here is Ryan Griffin in one of the two Ike Durbin cars making a run for the lead on lap number four. There were a number of people saying that Griffin should have been suspended for causing that first lap accident at Road America, especially since that uh, in that race he had just come back from serving another suspension for his antics at Ohio. The belief is that Griffin had not learned his lesson as we see uh, Caesar Villanova and defending series champion Thurston Blood making it three wide on Griffin for the lead. We had our first caution on lap number six. Watch Brooke Ingverson in the 16. She tags the back of the 54 of Dexter Hamlet. Offs out to meet and Claire Osir go for a ride after tagging the inside wall coming off of turn two. Troy Adams, the points leader in the nine car is involved as Tamid goes for a long, long ride on his roof down the backstretch. Oh, and he gets clipped by Martin Baltino Jr. Baltino started in the last row as he usually does and it isn't going to work out for him. Here's a look at uh, what happened to Claire Osir in the 28, one of the two uh, Lynx women's team cars. She gets squeezed into the wall off of turn two and then I think that's Dermot Scott in the 10 that sends her for a roll. Uh, she lands on top of the 9 of Troy Adams. Adams would end up continuing. Jim Cummings in the 04 is involved, as well as Nathan Ferguson in the 4, who was leading the points for quite a while at the beginning of the season. And I understand that Ali Collada in the 27, uh, Claire Osir's teammate, almost went for a similar ride. She swerves down the backstretch trying to correct her car and is almost sent onto, onto her roof by the 997 of Axel Anderson. Unlike her teammate, Collada drives the car away but there is smoke coming from that 27. She is quite obviously done. Dermot Scott almost smashes into the 27, but Thomas Caton, the 15, succeeds in running into the 27. Now, how on earth did this happen? K just runs right into the back of Collada like he was looking everywhere but out the front of his windshield, and he rolls onto his roof due to how sharp the transition between the banking and the apron is. Good job, Cade. You just took yourself out with one of the most avoidable collisions you can make. Here we are on board with Brian Morris, who collides with Caesar Villanova as he's pulling into his pit stall. And I think he got tagged by somebody else. I believe it was the 21 car, driven by Eric Molina. He did hit the back of Brian Morris. Uh, I guess he wasn't expecting uh, Morris to slow down right there. I'm not entirely sure if this will uh, incur the official's wrath. Those were some pretty minor collisions, and it didn't even matter for Villanova as he blew up while merging back onto the track. I can't say it's going to look too good for uh, the Gutierrez engineers uh, as their car blows up under caution. And now for some good news coming out of the pit lane. Thurston Blood's crew was the fastest and got him back out onto the track with the lead. That is Blood's teammate Buffy Borinas coming up through the inside for the second position. Uh, Power Steering Incorporated has made quite a splash in the TM Light series. Blood is obviously the defending series champion, and Borinaz has a handful of wins to her name as Borinaz takes the lead from her teammate. But then Borinaz is challenged uh, immediately by Ryan Griffin with a push from Quan Singh, one of the Chinese drivers in the field in the Yamaha 3 car. A four wide situation on lap number 12 turns into a scary moment as Roger Kendall gets together with the 14 of Brian Morris, sending Morris and Sakura Motoko onto the apron. They almost lose control of their cars, but they are able to merge back into traffic safely, although they almost had a collision with Brandon Larone, the 33 car, who is on the apron for some reason. And here's another very hairy moment on lap 14 as Ryan Griffin and Bobby Dollar in the 98. Uh, make a little bit of contact. Andre Kinasa then rubs bumpers with the 98 car and pushes 
back up into the 18. Oh, they're going four wide again. Uh, this isn't going to end well. They make contact again. And then Griffin starts laying on the 05 car. And it triggers a big, big pileup going into turn one. James Davison onto his roof and barrel rolling down turn one. Ryan Griffin just turned Andrea Kinasa in front of the field for no good reason and collected a whole bunch of good cars. Looking at Andrea Kinasa in the 05, Bobby Dollar got a little bit out of shape. Oh, after that collision with Griffin, Kinasa got into the back of Dollar, but she backed off, and now Roger Kendall makes a move on the inside, leaving Kinasa with really not too many options. And here's Griffin. He could have slid back in behind the 71 of Gott, but uh, he went out of his way to just turn Kinasa for no good reason. If you want proof that Griffin hasn't learned his lesson from Ohio, there it is. Oh, Kinasa gets kind of pushed onto a roof by Nasa Tsunamochi. Kinasa and Davison, the pole sitter, are both done. Look out! Martin Baltano is uh, late to the party and runs into another disabled car. Now let's look at the aerial view in slow motion, just to see how avoidable this was. Kinasa pushes up into Ryan Griffin after making contact with Bobby Dollar, which was kind of avoidable, but uh, nothing real bad came out of that. And now they're all stuck in a hairy four-wide situation. Bobby Dollar pushes up the track a little bit, which in turn pushes the 05 up into the 18. And apparently Ryan Griffin gets angry at the 05 for uh, making contact with him twice. And he just keeps laying on Kinasa. Uh, and eventually he's going to turn her right in front of the whole field. Mission accomplished, I guess. Griffin could have very easily slid in behind the 71 of Gott and continued about his business, but instead he decides to express his frustration in the worst possible way. Multiple innocent people are collected, and uh, if Griffin doesn't get a huge penalty for this, I will be very surprised. There's uh, Gott in the 71 sliding backwards. He had no business being involved in this wreck. He was an innocent victim, just like uh, almost everybody else in this wreck. By the way, that's not the end of it for Zach Gott. Here we have more shenanigans from the Ike Durbin camp, this time from Ike Durbin himself. As he apparently fails to notice, Zach Gott sitting disabled on the apron and smashes right into him. Good job on that damage control, Mr. Durbin. In the meantime, Thurston Blood's pit crew once again gave him the lead of the race for the restart. That is Lang Chong Kun in the sixth, the other Chinese driver in the field. Uh, he is currently two laps down and fighting to get one of those laps back. However, all of the other cars in the six-car breakaway are on the lead lap. Mark Blackwell in the 22, one of the Unit 11 Motorsports cars, tries to make a move for the lead using the six of Kuhn as a pick. I wonder if Thurston Blood is fuming as he's stuck behind the six car. Sometimes a competitive lapped car can be more of a nuisance than a slow one. Blackwell in the 22 is followed on the inside by Mike Andrews in the 51 and Dexter Hamlet in the 54 who was involved in the first wreck, but he is still going strong. But someone who isn't going strong at the moment is Jacob Card in the 133 EV Racing entry. He has to make an emergency pit stop on lap number 24, but luckily for Card, his crew got the problem fixed very quickly and he did not lose a lap. A bit further back in the field, Troy Adams leads a um, small field of stragglers. Adams, who was involved in the first two wrecks, is currently running in 17th. Uh, Adams is, of course, the current points leader, but he does have a fair gap over the rest of the field, so I don't think he's going to be too worried about his rivals gaining too much ground on him. Here's Mike Andrews still running up front in the 51. Uh, Andrews has made some controversial maneuvers this season. Oh, and there's another one. He's, he gets into the side of the 14 car and triggers another wreck coming into turn number one. I seriously doubt that Morris is going to be too happy considering he just got wrecked in a straight line. Although in Mike Andrews' defense, he did mention over his radio that he felt a tire going down for the past couple of laps. I don't doubt that as... Um, I have not seen any collisions between Andrews and Morris or any other reason why Andrews would be angry uh, with him, but we'll just have to see how that defense holds up. In the meantime, Thurston Blood is the first one out of the pit lane again, and he leads on the restart. Brooke Ingerson, who was involved in the first wreck, uh, or rather triggered the first wreck, is back up to second place with Cameron Taylor behind her. We got another caution a couple laps after the restart. 
as Mark Blackwell in the 22 seems to be annoyed with Sakura Motoko in the 40. He just runs right into the back of her coming through turn two. Nathan Ferguson in the four goes spinning into the wall. Dexter Hamlet took a pretty big lick. Car number 54 is done. And Blackwell's got a bit of explaining to do. He just ran over the 40 for no good reason. The entire field pitted again under this caution. But this time it, it would be Quan Singh leading the field to the restart. Troy Adams in the 9 is back up to second through pit strategy after being involved in the first two cautions. I'm sure that this is not what his points rivals wanted to see. Speaking of points rivals, uh, Cameron Taylor in the 68 is one of them. I believe that Taylor is running fourth in points at the moment, and Cameron Taylor has just taken the lead from Quan Singh in the 3. Lang Chong Kun in the 6 got one of his laps back after that last caution, but he is still one lap down. Brooke Ingerson and Brandon LaRoe are third and fourth, and then the two PSI cars, Thurston Blood and Buffy Boranaz, are uh, up in this lead group as well. That is a very nice recovery for Boranaz after she was involved in the second caution. Sakura Matoko gets in the way of the leaders on lap number 41. She just pitted a couple of laps ago, and apparently that wasn't enough to repair the damage that the 40 car has. Matoko, of course, drives the Terra International Motorsports entry, uh, the decision to hire her came from way out of left field, but Matoko has picked up a victory in her rookie campaign at uh, Moss Sport in Canada. However, she's obviously not going to get anywhere near that kind of result tonight. Kwon Singh pits by himself on lap number 47. We believe that this was a scheduled stop, but it is a bit early to be uh, making green flag pit stops. Two laps later, Cameron Taylor, Brandon LaRoe, and Buffy Borinaz are in. I believe that these three are going to be better off than Quan Singh, who just went by the pit entrance, as Quan Singh again pitted by himself. And then the rest of the lead lap cars, plus uh, Lang Chang Kun, follow suit on the very next lap. And here is the battle for the lead. After a pit stop cycle out, Thurston Blood is the leader, Quan Singh is second, and Troy Adams is third. So, uh, Quan Singh pitting by himself without any potential drafting partners. Did not hurt him after all. Kwon Singh has really needed a good result this season. The speed and luck just hasn't been there. Looking a bit deeper in the field, here is the battle for fourth between Cameron Taylor and Buffy Boranaz with uh, Lang Chang Kun in the mix. I don't think these two cars really have any hope of challenging the leaders unless we catch a caution. And looking even further back in the field, here's the battle for sixth which Brandon LaRoe is winning at the moment. Brooke Ingerson and Jacob Card are right behind him. That's a very nice recovery by Jacob Card after he had to make that emergency pit stop. Uh, Brooke Ingerson is on her way to a very good result as well after replacing Tiffany Matthews in the middle of the season in the Matthews Motorsports car. The Arla Lights double was just a bit too much for Tiffany Matthews. I don't know why people would even attempt that in the first place. It's a very grueling schedule. Quan Singh blows up with just 12 laps to go. I said that this team has needed a good result, but they're not going to get that tonight. Want a good indicator of how attrition-filled this race has been? Lang Chang Kun, who is a lap down, is currently in 10th place, and Sakura Motoko in the 40, quite a ways back behind Cameron Taylor, is running in 8th. Speaking of Cameron Taylor, he dives into the pits, coming to 7 laps to go. These cars are going to have to make another round of pit stops. The fuel cells in these TM Lights cars are very, very small. The leaders come into the pits for the final time on lap number 65. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the pit crews to keep their cars in contention for the win, and luckily for both of the leaders, their pit crews delivered. And then coming out of the pits, Troy Adams guns the throttle. He is much, much faster than Thurston Blood coming back out onto the track. This could potentially be the pass for the win, as these two were not exchanging the lead at all prior to this set of pit stops. Troy Adams, who was involved in the first two wrecks of this race, has made an excellent recovery to take the lead from the defending series champion. He has definitely shown tonight why he is the points leader, but he here comes Thurston Blood. He's got a big charge on the nine car. And there goes Blood to the inside. Uh, Adams does not really fight him at all. I think he knows that Thurston Blood has a much better car than he does, so he is not going to risk crashing and jeopardizing his points lead. Here we are on the white flag lap. Troy Adams is glued to the back bumper of the one car. He really doesn't seem to have anything for Thurston Blood. Oh! Adams has just blown up 
coming out of the final corner. It's going to be easy sailing for Thurston Blood as he finally captures his first Team Lights victory of the season. But what a miserable turn of events for Troy Adams, who loses a potential runner-up finish and big points. Cameron Taylor takes the runner-up position and gains a little bit of ground on Troy Adams, who ended up finishing in seventh. Brandon LaRoe, Brooke Ingerson, and Buffy Borinaz make up the rest of the top five. Ingerson won a lights race last season. Jacob Card is sixth. Sakura Matoko and Lang Chang Kun, two and four laps down respectively, finish eighth and ninth. And Quan Singh, despite blowing up with 11 laps to go, rounds out the top 10. So it wasn't a complete disaster of a night for that team.